key objective of front-end application frameworks is the ability to have dynamic rendering of UI elements. A key form of dynamic rendering is conditional rendering where something is displayed or not based on a certain condition. In this lesson, we will cover how React supports conditional rendering along with the bad practice to avoid. So let's go. Before we start looking at conditional rendering within React, we need to cover the basic JavaScript principle of falsy values, which is something that conditional rendering depends upon. Anything that is the literal false, null, undefined, the empty string, or zero or nan is known as a falsy value within JavaScript. That is when used within a conditional block, it essentially behaves like false. So all of these conditions are essentially false and we do not see any console log log statements when we execute this code. With this out of the way, let's jump into a React application. Now React has some special handling for these falsy values. So for false, null, undefined and empty string, React essentially renders nothing. And you can see that on the screen right now. However, for numeric falsy values, such as zero and nan, React will actually render them out irrespective of their falsy or truthy. And this is not something that is by mistake. This is actually a very valid choice by the React creators. Let's look at an example to demonstrate why it's a great idea to always show a number even if it is something like zero. Say you are building a very simple counter application. You have this variable for the count, and then you have these functions increment and decrement to increment and decrement the count. And then we simply render out the buttons that are wired to the ink and the deck functions, and then we render out the current count. Now, because React renders zero, we don't have to do any special handling in this case. We start with the count zero, we can increment it a few times, and we can decrement it. And if it arrives at zero, we don't have to do any special handling. And we get a smooth transition in all of the numeric values. Now let's put that thought aside for a while and cover the concept of and chaining within JavaScript. Let's say we have a variable representing a person object. Now when this object is initialized and it contains a member name that in turn contains a member first and last, chaining between person and person.name and person.name.first is essentially the same as executing person.name.first. Here the JavaScript runtime sees that person is truthy and therefore it tries person.name, which is also truthy, and therefore finally terminates at person.name.first and we get the chain string. However, if person is assigned to something that is falsy, then this chain is short circuited to the first falsy value, which in our case is the person object, which we've initialized to null, and that is what this chain results to. Now, the thing to remember about such and chaining is that your objective is to finally resolve to the last value. However, if any of the intermediate values are falsy, then that is what the chain will terminate with. So in the person example, it terminated with null, and in this Boolean example, it will terminate with false. Armed with this knowledge, let's look at how we can do conditional rendering within React. We create this Boolean state is shown, and then we have a function that toggles it between true and false. Then we have a button applied to this toggle function, and then based on the is shown, we chain off of the and to show this conditional content. Now, when this application starts, we have the is shown set to false. So this particular and chain will resolve the Boolean value of false. And as we saw previously, the Boolean value of false is not something that is rendered by React. However, when we click this button, the is shown condition becomes true, and then this chain becomes the content, and that content is what is displayed by React. And of course, when we click the toggle button again, the condition becomes false, and this chain becomes false, and false is not something that is rendered by React, and the content goes away. So chaining off of a boolean with an and is the standard practice for conditionally rendering content within React. Now, in addition to using booleans, you can use other falsies in your and chain for conditional rendering as well. Let's look at another example. Here we have a type representing a user object. If the user is loaded, we have the name property. Otherwise, the object is null. We have a state variable which we initialize to null, and then we have a load function which initializes a new object with name Jane, and then a clear function which sets it back to null. Within the UI, we have the button to load a user as well as to clear the user, and then we use our knowledge of conditional rendering to use an AND chain to chain off of user to show a paragraph containing user dot name. Now, when user is null, this chain shortens to null. And as we know, null is not something that React will render and we see nothing. However, when we load the user, it turns into an object, which is truthy. And therefore we see the paragraph tag containing user.name. And of course, when we set the user back to null by pressing clear, 
that paragraph tag goes away. Now this general pattern of using AND and chaining for conditional rendering will continue to work for all falsy values except for number. Let's demonstrate the issue that happens when you try to use it with a number value. We're going to build a simple UI that shows a number of messages. We start with a list containing a single message, never gonna give you up. And then we have these functions called add message, which adds additional messages and remove message, which removes the last added message. Within the UI, we have the similar pattern where we have two buttons, one white to add message, the other white to remove them. And then we check if there are any messages using messages.length and chain off of it to show an unordered list. Within the list, we loop through all of the messages and show them as a list item. Now we started off with the messages containing a single item and sure enough, we see an unordered list containing that single message. And this continues to work as you add more messages. However, when you start to remove messages and you end up with zero messages, that is messages.length is zero, uh, you see this number zero instead of the list just disappearing. And the reason we've already covered is that React will render falsy numbers because that is a feature that you want in certain cases. Now a quick fix is to map the falsy values to null by using the ternary operator. That is, use the truthy check of messages.length to render this unordered list. And if it is falsy, then map it to null. And we know that null is not something that React will render. And with this in place, we no longer get that ugly zero showing up. And when we add more items, we get the unordered list. And when we remove all the way down to zero, the list goes away. However, I'm not a fan of using the ternary for this particular purpose. And there are two key reasons why. First, it is verbose and not as elegant looking as and and. And then secondly, the intent of the conditional rendering with the ternary operator is unclear. It seems like an if else, but for our else case, there is nothing there and therefore we have this now. So it's a bit misleading in its intent. Let's look at a better way of using conditional rendering by continuing a method of and chaining by adding one additional concept that handles all of the falsy values, including numbers. You might be familiar that you can use the not operator on any falsy value to turn it to the literal value true. A fun fact is that if you combine it with another not operator, that literal true becomes the literal false. So for all of these falsy values, if you prefix them with not not, they turn into the literal false as can be seen in the console logs. So if you are planning to use these falsy values for an and and conditional rendering chain, all that you need to do is to prefix it with not not and then it will be converted to the literal false. And as we know, React doesn't render false, so they will disappear from the DOM. So for our particular use case, we simply prefix messages.length with not not. And when the length is zero, it disappears. Otherwise we get the unordered list. Now you can choose to always prefix your conditionals with not not, or only do that when you are dealing with numbers. And you would have to make the same choice if you were using the ternary operator, that is always use it or only use it for numbers. But in my opinion, not not is just more elegant. And that's all for this lesson. Smash that like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.